Hi, I'm Old Man Dan, and this is Old Man... <laughs> I just fucked it up. I saw you sitting there pouring, and I said your name. I started by saying, I'm Old Man Dan, as opposed to, that's Let Old Man roll. Dan. Let it roll. Yeah. Let it I'm roll. I'm Old this Man is... Curtis, and this is Old Man Dan, and this is uh, the way he's... It happens. He's got a better beverage than I do today for our Tabletop Tuesday. And we're going to track our progress on the tabletop games that we play. In particular for this series, we are talking about Kill Team 21 and uh, and the things that we are doing for that. So, how are you doing today, Dan? I'm great. How are you? Uh, it's, been, it's been a week. It's been a week. Yeah. <laughs> Already? It's Tuesday. No. Yeah. No, it's Wednesday. It's Tuesday. it's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? We record on Wednesdays. That's right. Yeah. On Tuesdays. I got all discombobulated because my my wife had time off of work, and so yeah, I got all mixed up. Election day was yesterday, so I should remember that today is Wednesday. Yeah. You should. I mean, as you can tell, we're recording this on uh, the day after election day, so um, you know. Looks like we're still here. That's a good sign. So episode one of season two was actually shot a few weeks ago and not released until mm-hmm. last week. Yeah. So things were said. Promises were made. <laughs> promises were made. <laughs> um, assumptions were made. Mm. and And today is when we really um see the see what's in the pudding uh see what okay. proof is in the pudding i like pudding i know i do too so I what, what too. Do we got let's see if we like uh let's see if we like today's pudding um, okay so now that the show is going to be weekly we are going to have a little bit more of a structured format so first things first what's our weekly progress Yeah, okay, weekly progress. Do uh, you want me to start? Uh, yes. So, Dan, okay. uh, uh, you please. Uh, I, I made... Okay, well, look. Look, um, I had said I was going to do the Grey Knights at the, be- at the end of... During episode one. But, like, Squats just came out? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking! <laughs> I'm joking. No, I have, I have, I have built Iolanthus. <gasps> oh, uh, with his demon hammer. Oh, that's great. Uh, I am, I am currently building Rugen with his psi cannon. Nice. I, I'm trying to decide which head I want. He, he's, he's just a headless right now, but otherwise, he's he is built. And and from can we there, see him even with, without his head? Uh, he is not within arm's reach, so no, you may not. Understood. We'll put up a picture. Um, and and so from the and that's it. That's what I've got. Okay. I had intended to start building a few days ago, and prime, but I ran into two problems. One. I don't actually have the primer that I thought I had. So I'm going to have to go to the store and buy primer. Two, it rained for the last couple of days. So I couldn't, and I don't have a garage that I can prime in. I live in an apartment. So if it's, if I can't go outside on the patio and prime, it ain't happening. It's not happening. So that's what I've got. I've got, I am progress building is why is all I've got to report so far. That's better I than good. I expected. I feel good that I've got Iolanthus done. Although That's good. he's not he's not quite he's not quite Iolanthus because he's only he's only in power armor, he's not terminator armor, so now he's just mm. like Iolanthus. <laughs> but here he is. He's here. He's done. That's very impressive. That's very nice. That's what very nice. I, I had gotten the impression got? from our oh. uh from our previous uh, conversations via via different messaging services that maybe you hadn't had a chance to do anything yet 
And so... Well, surprise! It was a surprise! It Yay. was a surprise. So that was... <laughs> that's great. That's great. Um, did you see the comments that were left on episode one by friend of the show, Nelson? Nelson, absolutely I did. He mapped out an entire painting strategy for these guys. I feel like he should do a Great Night Squad too, <laughs> because he always he knows what to do. So no, I I am going to uh, make notes on his suggestions of all the different because he's got like okay, do a Zenithal highlight and then wash this and oil that and this and oh well, holy crap! I mean, he's like really got it got a procedure down. So I'm going to have to review that again before I go to the store and make sure I get all the bits that, that I really want so I can see if I can uh, mimic his his procedure. Yeah, because it was detailed. Like, if you're curious, go to episode one comments. And, and it, I mean, it's like three paragraphs long. It was very detailed. So much appreciated. Um, In his comment, he actually mentioned something that's kind of like hot on the painting scene right now which is the slap chop method yeah Did you, was that your first that experience is. with that i don't know what that is okay so slap I mean, chop be yeah. beyond him mentioning it yeah i i don't is that the one that everybody on twitter is like oh if this is, you're you're not a real painter if this is what you're using and then other people are like dude it, if if it gets the paint on the mini why are you why are you being a gatekeeper on how people paint it's 100 percent part of that conversation it's like yeah god can people just Stop doing that. Just if someone wants to paint a certain way, let them paint. Who cares? Who cares? It's about having people in the hobby enjoying each other and themselves and their games. Hashtag. Oh, hashtag no gatekeeping. It is so tiresome. Just every hobby that anybody wants to participate in, there's just... there's. I'm not going to use the terms, but... I will. I'm done. Assholes. There are assholes in every fandom. Yeah. It's, Just don't be the asshole. It's Hashtag, yeah. don't be the asshole. Yeah. It's, it, you, it's, 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 just stop. Stop. Just have fun. Let people have fun. <laughs> All right. End rant. <laughs> What's your weekly update? What's your progress report? So I had ambitious plans when we last spoke and what i thought was a hearty amount of free time and <laughs> i did not um in fact i ended up right now i am in between uh positions for my career and so i have picked up a variety of uh consulting and temp jobs to be able to fill the gap and I've been, I've been working, I've been working a lot and it took That's up good. all of my time. So where I was several weeks ago is pretty much still where I'm at <laughs> Okay. several weeks later. Now I have gotten more work done. This is, wait, this, this guy is almost, almost ready. Who the heck is that? I thought this, you were going to do Geller Pox. Eh, remember I was finishing part of my pile of shame. And this was part of that pile of shame, and I thought I was okay. going to be able to finish them in the last couple days before November started. Okay. And then I'd just be able to go into my Geller Pox. That's one of 15 that I thought I was going to have done in those couple of days. Like I said, I, I didn't have the free time that I expected. Um, so the amount of progress that I've made on my Geller Pox infected is... Zero. I feel so much better. Now. Now, I do have you beat in a certain amount of ways in that they are built and primed. Yeah, you did that months, maybe years, years ago. Years ago. <laughs> years ago. 2019, actually. It was right before pandemic hit. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, my segment for for this week is is really really small. 
So we've got really sad progress reports this time. Do we dare set a goal for next week? I, I think that we not only dare, but we have to. We have to. Because left to our own devices, with no kind of accountability, mm -hmm. with no one in the comments yelling at us, without something to put on camera, uh -huh. uh, we dropped the ball. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> dropped just we really did. just there were holes in our hands and the ball went boom. it just fell right to the ground you published the video of episode one yesterday yeah and then said here's our recording schedule and like i'm looking at it, i'm like oh that tomorrow that's t i haven't done but okay no this so this is good so yeah weekly schedule now, okay, so what's your goal okay. for next week? I am not going to be able to complete the pile of shame work that I expected to be able to finish before I got into my Geller Pox infected. So, okay. what I am going to do is finish that one Grenadier because he's almost done. So he's just got to get done. But then I'm going to start on the, the simpler of the... Geller Pox infected, and I'm going to start painting the grubs and bugs. So okay. by our next recording session next week, I'm expecting to have all the grublies and buglies for the Geller Pox infected complete. What commitment uh, can you make, yeah. old man Dan? Yeah. I can totally get the whole squad built. I can put together 10 dudes and glue them together and make those decisions about what weapons each guy is going to have and, and whatnot. I can, I can plan that out. The, the, the roadblock there is just making that choice of, do I want a force weapon or do I want falchions or, you know, that kind of decision. Cause those, those weapons all ha all do different things. So it's just deciding how I want to play this unit. But then building them is pretty simple process. It takes time because they're they're very tiny pieces, and uh, I was they were squirting all over the place when I was trying to hold them <laughs> hold them in tweezers and 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 glue it, and I squeeze the tweezers too hard, and the thing would go. Boop! And then I'd have to like hunt for it on the carpet, and that is the worst. Uh, the so, worst. So there's that. So once that's done, I'm. I think at some point this week I can get myself to either Emerald Knights or Geeky Tees to purchase the Army Painter Gray Primer, and then prime these guys. So built and primed by next recording session. Is that what I said? That is what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. Built and primed next built session. Built and primed. If, if, no, yep. built and primed next session. So when you say done, you mean completed. Yeah. Done, painted, based, ready to go on the table. So the gribbly bits are part of that, like, Nurgle recipe that I talked about when we first started discussing it. It's a couple of washes over the paint that's already there. Honestly, the hardest part of that is going to be getting the base part done. And the base part is actually the Necromunda bases, like the tech bases. Mm -hmm. So it already looks like decking for the ship. Oh, okay. So like the hardest part of that is going to be getting it like metallic and then weathered and then, and then that's it. So, you know, it's a bunch of gribbly bits, sure, but it's it's uh, there's not a lot of detail painting on that. Now, you know, we'll see how this looks in a week when all of a sudden I'm like, I got like three colors on it, and I don't know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna set the goal high because I know that those Gellerpox hulks and the Gellerpox walkers are gonna require effort and time because I'm gonna want them to look cool because they're so. They're so hefty. They take up yeah, so much space. Those are big characters. Yeah. So I'm I want to get surprised. I want to get the I want to get the the little bits done fast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. And so completes 
this week's update. <laughs> All right, see ya. No games for old so now that we're recording weekly, um, and because we we uh, ran into the issue of uh, of not having a whole lot to share with our painting and team building for this season thus far, <laughs> uh, I thought it might be nice to talk about other things that happen to also be tabletop related because we're not just we're not just one game gamers. If you visited the channel yeah. before, you know that that Dan is a video gamer. Right. Uh, if you've if you've known us for any amount of time, you know that we've been D and D players since the late eighties, early nineties. Uh, eventually you will find out that we've played a variety of different uh, role-playing games, Cyberpunk 2020, GURPS in a variety of different ways. Uh, Back Shadow when Run. Cyberpunk was 2020. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I haven't moved on to Cyberpunk Red. I'm still a Cyberpunk 2020 guy. Uh. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought it might be nice to add a new section. Okay. Other Tabletop Things! <laughs> We actually just wrapped a Dungeons and Dragons campaign that I yes. was DMing that just ended on Monday. One of the things that happened when I moved up to Portland was I actually had another game group insert dramatic music. Dun, dun, dun. The betrayal. I know, right? Right? Uh, but what it did was it allowed me to audition some some stories and some campaigns with a separate group of people and then, uh, and then bring them back for the other group. And, uh, uh, so created a dark wizard named Udazi and, uh, had old man, Dan and, uh, the other old men, Jeff and Scott and Dean all take their characters through the caves of Udazi where they, found magical treasures and took down evil monsters and beasts. And then they made an agreement with the Dark Lord Udazi to go on a quest. And on that quest, they tried to solve the mystery of a kingdom that had a magical plague. And uh, Dan, how'd that go for you? Oh my God. It, well, first of all, it was a fun, it was a fun campaign. It was, um, it was a frustrating story to be a character in though because you are a you're a, just a powerless pawn of this Udazi character and it was you started with should I talk about the story absolutely at all? the absolutely. beginning so okay yeah, so I was I a mean... monk and the you started by getting being granted these powers there was a, an old well that had that held old magic in it and whatever you put in the well gets some imbued with this this un, unusual power and so my monk being a man of sacrifice thought I'll just jump into the well myself and ended up having his entire body imbued with this power so that every time I would punch somebody, it would damage everyone around me, including my allies. It and was, that was neat. so frustrating to try to, to first to figure out what was happening and then what the radius of this effect was and then have to manage that because then, of course, everybody else... They've got their own things going on, and it, it, it was it was a struggle to not it was a struggle to separate player knowledge from character knowledge for me in that way because I'm like okay well I don't want to run into the middle of the melee there because I'll just hurt all of my allies as well so you know my my monk once he figured out what was going on he was like okay now i've got to like play around the edges and and because i don't want to hurt harm my allies so well, i think it's really important to figuring uh, all of uh-huh to address like what your monk's like purpose was too because part of part of the thing was everybody started recognizing your character as an avatar of balance 
And wasn't the philosophy or or God that you served the the yes. God of balance? Of balance, yeah. Yeah. And so just balanced out. If you're going to hurt somebody, you're going to hurt everybody. You're going to hurt everybody. <laughs> and, and my monk did not interpret that as balance. At all. <laughs> right. So he, so he felt cursed. Everybody else was like, awesome. I've got, you know, I threw my sword in there and now it's, now it's like super powerful sword. And, and well, to be fair, me, I felt, that, I that felt sword became cursed. cursed. Yeah. And well, maybe, but the, the player who had it didn't certainly didn't feel like it was a curse, <laughs> but my character felt like he had been cursed. And so internal, I didn't vocalize it quite as much as I, uh, had thought maybe I could or should have, but, but my character was going through, um, a lot of, uh, self harm, mental issues and potential suicidal ideation. And because he, he felt so unbalanced Mm. With, I mean, he, he mm. felt like he had become the antithesis of what he had been trying to do within his faith, and there was nothing he could do to remove it. He couldn't un, he couldn't remove this power. It was just a part of him, mm. and so he, he, the character, felt very unhappy with the situation. So. So that, that was an, played that was a, really well, though. That was an interesting thing to have to try to deal with as a as a player trying to play a character who's feeling that way. Uh, even though I don't think it came across in the game at all, at least not to the other players, because I don't think they had any idea that my character was going through any of that. It was he was he was keeping on. You know, he's a monk, right? So he just he keeps it all to himself. He he meditates on his own, and he you know he's not gonna. He's not going to go, you know, he's not a bard. He's not going to whine about it to everybody. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody Everybody got a little bit of a monkey's paw wish out mm. of that well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Scott's fighter ended up getting a cursed sword that craved blood every time it was drawn. And if he didn't draw blood from an enemy, it would draw blood from him mm -hmm. to, to pay the price. Uh, 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 Dean and his cleric, he sacrificed his holy weapon, which actually uh, satisfied the wish that he had to end a god war that had happened. But then he tried to retrieve it, so he was cursed with a hammer in place of his right hand. Yeah. That he had very little control of, and it would <laughs> melt metal and just it would just do, do terrible, terrible things. When he tried to use it, then his god, because he tried to uh, steal the holy relic back, decided to punish him for a while until he was able to find redemption. And then, oh, that's what all of that was. Because I yeah. hear the two of you talking about, like, or he would say, like, do I, ha do I, did I get this spell back or something? Like, or do mm -hmm. I, do I have this spell level available to me now? And I was like, what, what is going on over there? And I, and that was just player talk. So you know, I. My character didn't understand what was happening with that, so he didn't respond to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah I, I, so. that was an, that was another interesting thing about it was that as a player, I never felt like I fully understood what the other characters' gifts slash curses were, it, it, and that made it interesting too because you you kind of I I say you I, I personally felt very wary of the other players and they also gave you reason to be wary well and they were wary of me too they were like you know we get into combat and everyone's like stay away from gallows because he's gonna he's gonna hurt all of us and i'm like hey, guys i just want to help <laughs> so uh I, I felt and that was another thing that another another thing that affected my character is that he felt like he was being held at arm's length because of his gift slash curse. Mm. And so um, 
that was that was affecting him mentally and socially that these people that he was supposed to be allies with were very standoffish in that way because they didn't want to be too close to him. So, yeah. yeah. It was uh, it was it was a really it was a really cool uh, element of the story that you have to, had to manage both as a player and as the character. So, it was cool. It was it was neat. Was I'm neat. glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. Uh, if uh, if y'all have interest in managing that adventure yourself, or you want to hear more about it, mention it in the comments because uh, it all does exist on paper, uh, just in in chicken scratch that I understand. So if you actually want <laughs> the real adventure uh, of the caves of Udazi and the uh, magic plagues of Antilia, just let us know. We can make these things available. So yeah. But yeah, it was a what good time you running do? it with would you, you Would you write out a an adventure module? Yeah, and I mean, oh. technically, I already have. Oh, well, but you, yeah, but you just said it's in Chicken Scratch, so you'd yeah, have I to mean, actually. I'd have to actually type it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put that okay. in a PDF, though. Yeah. Okay. When we that's get to a thousand subscribers, when we get to a thousand subscribers, that's an option for the Patreon. What's Give up? Away for free. What's up? Oh. Yep. Free for sub for patrons. <laughs> Free for patrons. Free for patrons. Everybody yeah. else, forty nine ninety five. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess I don't. Do we want to mention we've we've already got another another game of GURPS lined up to follow the conclusion of your your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. So old man Scott, the one who had the vampiric sword in your D and D campaign, he has been mulling this GURPS campaign around for, did you say months or years? or Years. So years. so he's like, I have an opportunity now. We have completed yeah. all of our uh, D&D campaigns that are still ongoing. And and so now he's going he's gonna to do that. And it's kind of a, he's, he's teased it as a uh, modern day conspiracy conspiracy theory mystery kind of thing i don't know but he's having each of us create kind of a just a regular person and then something's going to happen i'm assuming there's going to be some kind of an inciting event that that brings us all together possibly Right. Well, have, have you? Have you he, might, <laughs> he may. He may run this with all of us separately. I, I don't know. H have you determined what your character is going to be, and are you allowed to share? Um, I I am between two different archetypes, so I'm hesitant to share just yet. Okay, th then because don't, there are some additional anymore. mechanics with the character. Okay, but um. Uh, but yeah, Scott and I have been pretty active in our conversations. I think this oh, is really? something that a lot okay. of people don't um, don't really consider when when they're doing advanced role playing game stuff. Is that it, it's one thing to start and just kind of learn how to play, toss some dice, have an adventure. That's great. But as you start getting into it more and as it starts to develop and as it becomes um, something that that you work with in a group, being able to tell a compelling story together becomes really, really important. You want to play for the narrative. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so instead of – when I was 16, it was I want a badass cleric that has the Hammer of the Gods spell. You know what I mean? And now it's, I want to be a golf pro who's a coward and um, and doesn't understand what it means yeah. when a Cthulhu hole opens in the middle of the water hazard. You mm. know what I mean? <laughs> like, like I, I think, I think the, uh, the days of being a badass at the beginning of your campaign start to go away as you start to respect how much more exciting... It can be to just be like, I'm um, I'm a 52 year old beer bellied sports yeah. fanatic, and now I've got to fight uh, monsters that are crawling out of the ground. You know, 
And I think the GURPS system is a really good one for exploring that type of storytelling because where Dungeons and Dragons does not have a specified rule set for character flaws, it's mm. certainly something that you can create yourself and role play. Absolutely. But if you need some or would like some guidance, some kind of a framework, the GURPS system provides that. So it, it's a good alternative if it's something that you want to explore, but uh, aren't really sure how to go about it, or don't feel like... Personally, I don't feel like my role-playing skills are strong enough, because I like I just think decided... With, or like I was just saying with your campaign, there was all these things that I wanted my character to say and do, and I just, you know, I just didn't do it. But it, with the GURP system, there's there's me, me, uh, mechanics, mechanics for it. So that helps. And so I'm now, looking forward to exploring that and, and really kind of stretching my, my role-playing in that way. Because I know he said, he's already said, this is not, don't min-max... You're just a, you're just a, you're some guy. So he said you can even create, you could create yourself if you want in, in GURPS and, and, uh, something's going to happen to you and we'll, we'll go with it. So I don't know. Anyway, I, don't know. I would push back on your, uh, your personal, uh, 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 self-deprecating comment about, oh, no, no, no. I wasn't fishing for compliments. I was, I was, I'm being not here very, to, I'm not I here was... to compliment you either. Um, but I am, <laughs> okay. I am going to tell you that, uh, uh, the thinking work that you did as a person who has been an actor for almost four decades and someone who has trained actors for more than two decades, um, wow. the thinking that you did is the same kind of background work that you'd want to do as an actor. So if it's there, it's there, whether it's verbalized or not. Mm -hmm. Everybody could tell that you were tormented. You were absolutely tormented. And your exasperation whenever somebody called you the avatar of balance and you started like, <laughs> for characters under a certain wisdom and intelligence, they would just start fawning over and would follow him wherever he went. And it wasn't... 100% of people that he saw, because many of them had wisdoms or intelligences that would counteract that. But there were plenty of times when all of a sudden people would just be like, Avatar! Oh, yes, Avatar, what would you right. like us to do? Right. And your dismissal of that was always just like, oh, not again. Yeah, Man, yeah. What's going on? He just, he just wanted to be left alone. Mm-hmm. You didn't want a part of any of this. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, dude. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh. And you got no well. help from your party members. No help. Oh, they encouraged it. They did. They were like, this is awesome and funny. Yes, yeah. that's the Avatar. <laughs> and and on top of that, you had Scott and, and, uh, and Jeff encouraging them, like, to the front of battle lines... Just be like, go, 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 go. It's okay. That's Pro the fodder. Protect your avatar. <laughs> terrible, terrible. Just evil. Oh, it's going to be interesting to see evil how behavior. does this. Um, I feel like we need to put an insert in here. GURPS stands for... Generic uh, Universal generic Role-Playing universal. System. Generic Universal Role-Playing System, yes. yes. Created by Steve deal. Jackson. Uh, different than the Steve Jackson who helped co-found Games Workshop back in the back in the seventies. Hmm. Yeah, this is the Steve Jackson. Who the American did... Steve Jackson. Yeah, American Steve. Jackson. Is he American? I think so. Yeah, maybe Canadian. North American. North American Steve Jackson. Let's find out. He's from Austin, Texas. Ah, okay. Yeah. American Steve I was, Jackson. I was totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Good call. Good call. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, it is, it is a really neat system because it allows you to play anything yeah. as opposed to like Pathfinder, which requires Starfinder or Star Wars in that D20 system, if you want to play that, but it still makes you fight with like swords and stuff. 
um, or or some more specific systems. Actually, all all other systems pretty much are pretty specific. Playing Call of Cthulhu has specific uh, mechanics that have to do with madness and and alter horror yeah. and things like that. Superhero games have very specific mechanics, but GURPS really does let you just play anything. It's adaptable to any format or genre. So it's 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 pretty it's a pretty neat system. And their source books, especially in the nineties. Oh my 90s, gosh. God, they're so good. There's a million of them. There's a million or of them. Or at least there were. I don't know if they're still valid or not, but anyhow. Yeah. So that was No Games for We also have another new segment that we're gonna be doing weekly, and this one is called Stuff we're hyped about. <laughs> no games for old that name might change. That <laughs> name might change. <laughs> okay. These are things. Other that... Warhammer 40k related things we're hyped about. No, not just Warhammer 40k. We are multitudes. We are many faceted. We are the D20 of interests. We Ooh. have lots of faces. So this is a chance for us to talk about things that we saw in the past week um, that have been exciting or cool or we're looking forward to this could okay. be game related this could be uh media related pop culture related maybe maybe it's a book um i don't know i don't know we're going to keep it okay. open-ended it's going to find its own flow but okay. uh uh i will start to lay like a foundation all right what i'm thinking set the vibe curtis in warhammer forty thousand, uh-huh. i am an imperial player I started with Space Marines, and while I appreciate a child soldier warrior monk who's psycho-indoctrinated and, uh, and, and post-human, um, <laughs> as I've matured, I have learned that uh, I appreciate a human standing against the horrors of the galaxy far, far more than, uh, than some post-human super soldier. So, the Astra Militarum, which used to be known as the Imperial Guard, and gamers of a certain vintage will still call the mm-hmm. Imperial Guard. Yeah, are... I don't think I'll ever get used to calling them Astra Militarum. They're, still, they're always going to be the IG for me. For real. For real. Uh, um, oh, Astra Militarum sounds cool. It's, it's it Space sound... Army. It's Space Military. It's just, it's just, it's just bullshit uh, Latin for Space Military. Yeah. But anyway. That's neither here nor there. Point is, the range is getting a refresh after decades of mostly the same infantry models with the Mm. occasional, like, extra vehicle here and there. Okay. So, first of all, next week, the the new Cadian Battle Force Army comes out with a bunch of new figs. And so we're looking at new Cadian Shock Troops, which are similar to the ones that already exist, but I mean, you can see there's a lot more detail in these now. Um, they, they've also gotten a little bit bigger in their, in their scale, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. Um, they also have some new tactics and things like that. I, I'm not too worried about the rules. The rules always change, but the toys are neat. And so, uh, they are also getting these brand new field alt- artillery pieces. So instead of just heavy weapons and tanks, there are now these like medium sized things like the bombast field gun, which is kind of like a mini uh, artillery barrage weapon. They've got the heavy LAS cannon, which is an even more powerful LAS cannon than the regular LAS cannon. And they've got the Malleus rocket launcher, which is just, it just punches down a whole bunch of pain from the sky. <laughs> now there are a couple others, there are uh, a couple others that are but they're these are the ones they're showing off. Wow. And uh they've updated the the Sentinels to have a new look and oh, a little bit I've, better design. I've always as a as a Mech Warrior fan, I've always liked the Sentinels. Yeah. They just they're just basically it they that and dreadnoughts. Dreadnoughts and the the Sentinels are just, they're just the mech warrior uh, item there. I, yeah. 
very cool. And you could you could see the uh, the like... armored sentinel is looking pretty cool too. A little bit more round, a little yeah. bit more updated. Yeah, yeah it's I really mean that neat. that thing that we're looking at right there that is a heavily armed and armored walking porta potty, and I'm here <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. That thing looks awesome. That plasma cannon. Now, one of the other things. Oh, this is the wrong one. Uh oh. One of the other things that I'm really enjoying about the new rule set that's coming along with them is that I, as we know, play for the narrative. Mm -hmm. And I made up my Astra Militarum army back when, back, oh, geez, in what, fourth edition? So it was 20 years ago. And I liked a lot of the different regiments that existed and i wanted them all in the army so came up with van, van lewin's leftovers which is an army that was formed made of the leftovers of other regiments that were destroyed during battles and at the time we had two worldwide uh campaigns going on we had the battle of armageddon mm. and we had the original 13th black crusade and so all the games I was playing then between Inquisitor and 40K, uh, it all was like, oh, it makes a lot of sense. There's just complete devastation everywhere. We're going to push everybody together. And the only reason Colonel Van Leeuwen is Colonel is because he was the highest ranking one of the initial mix that they all put in place. So now the new rules are going to let you build that kind of army as the standard the standard is take whatever models you want and then you can build using uh using two of the 15 different doctrines that are going to be in the uh in the book and that creates 93 different combinations of play style for wow. the army so i'll be able to take something like parade drill which is associated with the mordians uh -huh. And give them expert bombardiers, which is something that's affiliated with like a uh, a uh, tank battalion, or okay. veteran guerrillas, which is something that would be like Gaunt's Ghosts or uh, or Jungle Fighters, and industrial efficiency, which is associated with the armored ranks of uh, of the Armageddon Steel Legion. So you know we've got the grim demeanor of of the Valhalla's. It it, it just it lets you take the parts that you want and put them together into a cool thing. That's really um, cool. And then, and then you know, they brought back the Antilia Rough Riders. Oh, ooh, neat. Um, uh, and then there are going to be specific rules for the Death Corps of Krieg uh -huh. and for the Katachan Jungle Fighters as well. So, okay. and, and of course, Sly Marbo's <laughs> coming back. <laughs> One of my favorite characters. <laughs> oh gosh, he you know it's 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 blatantly a Rambo, yeah, uh, Rambo slice Stallone ripoff. Although this one looks a little bit more like uh, if Dolph Arnold Lundgren. Schwarzenegger and Dolph Lundgren oh. had a baby. Um, but uh, you know, I've always appreciated a commando character that mm -hmm. is going to go in and do the job. They've made it. He's always been a pretty effective character but they've made it so that he can actually do the things that they talk about in the stuff in the fluff in the stories where he could pretty much pop up out of nowhere uh nerf your uh nerf your commander and then just flow back into the shadows and then pop up and like take out one of your other commanders and then flow back into the shadows and so, is he meant to be a like a special character within an entire 40k army correct yeah yeah so he he would replace a squad of something i don't think he's that expensive but oh. uh yeah he's like he was like 65 points in the previous codex and a squad is like 150 to 180 so oh. but we don't know we don't know what those tallies are going to be we don't know how he's going to work in yet but i already have my personal sly marbo uh, Corporal Cole Stag, who uh, is ready, ready to pop in, ready to pop in on the action. Is he painted? He is. Oh, and the Death Strike missile launcher system, which was always the nuke of 40k, 
um, just shy of being able to take out an entire table. Um, they have changed how that works to make it make more sense. Now, I don't want to get into the rules specifics here. If you want to talk about that, if you want to talk about 40K rules, talk about it in the comments. Happy to chip in on that. But what I will say is they've taken away the uh, the randomness of it, and now you can use it as a psychological weapon against your enemy, where you can just place the marker that says this is where the missile's going to land, and then decide whether or not it's actually going to land there this turn. So it's going to be a great way to be able to snipe, uh, snipe, uh, 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 what are they called? Objective markers. Okay. Wow. The gods... All of these things sound pretty cool, right? Sure. Like it's, it's making it so, first of all, I don't have to buy a thing because I already have, well, I got to buy the codex eventually, but my army is here. It's ready. So far, right. no extra thing that I'm even interested in picking up other than the codex. Okay. So as soon as that's out, then they came up with oh, this. Dang. That the thing Rogel, is bristling with weapons. This is the Rogel Dorn uh battle tank named after the Primarch of the Imperial Fists, Rogel Dorn. Uh it is halfway between a Bane Blade and a Lehman Rust tank, which is the standard battle tank. And as you mentioned, it got a lot of guns. It's yeah. got a lot of guns. And here it is as a size comparison. There is a regular trooper. Uh-huh. There is the standard Lehman Rust battle tank. Oh, wow. Okay. There it is. And then the Bane Blade. It's a chonky, chonky yeah. monster. Yeah. Chonky, chonky. Very monster. cool. Neat. You can kind of see how it's uh how it how it fares. I mean the stats don't mean much to you because you don't play. But uh, but it's wow. Are seventeen solid. wounds versus thirteen though for the Lehman Russ. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Maybe got some durability. Better. It's just shy of being like uh, an Imperial Knight, like uh, Mech. It's it's just a few. Well, I guess it's it's more than a few, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Uh, it's got a thing called an oppressor cannon, <laughs> which can shoot across the table, and uh, <laughs> ninety actually. 90 inches is the yeah. range. It's it's more than across the table. It's shooting across the room. And <laughs> yeah. So so those what? things, Dan, are, are the things that I am hyped about this week. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and what hypes me up even more is the fact that there's really only one thing I want to purchase out of all that. Uh, and that, that is maybe a Rogel Dorn or three. Or um, three. I mean, can you imagine? Is three imagine? A, uh, a unit? You can put up to three in a unit? or I honestly don't know, but that's how like Lehman Rust tanks work right now. So, probably. Probably. Maybe. It's the new thing, so Maybe. I'm going to guess that they're going to want to try and sell that as much as possible. Maybe two, then? Since it's more powerful and has more wounds? I mean, it's who knows? Bigger? I've still, I still have many tanks to paint so you know Get you're gonna have some there, time man. gotta have some time i okay. play kill team i play kill team more than 40k right uh-huh. now uh-huh. so you know i'm gonna worry about the kill team first okay hey dan yeah what are you hyped about <laughs> i i i mean you had a whole slideshow there I, I wasn't prepared for that i was just i was just gonna pimp uh the new episode of the podcast is is all i was gonna do well we should do so that. i am um yeah i've got in addition to this doing no games for old men stuff i am also one of the two hosts of the hero's journey podcast and that is a monthly podcast available on wherever including audible now and uh, we talk about books and movies and we talk about the story structure and the path the hero takes and every step of their journey and uh, this past this november's episode which will be out tuesday november 29th we'll be talking about the box office bomb cutthroat island <laughs> that because sounds like a patreon exclusive is that it's november it's turkey Oh my God! Okay. Huh? Okay, that makes huh? sense. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Dan, that's pretty great. When when is it going to be released again? 
Tuesday, November 29th. Nice. Nice. The last, and, tu- uh, last Tuesday of every month is, is our standard release day. So We're going to have a link to the most popular sites in the description down below, along with a link to the Hero's Journey Patreon in case you fall so in love with it oh, wow. that you decide this is something that you would like to participate in on a financial basis. Uh, you do have some Patreon... Cheers uh, to that. Like, uh, Patreon... Uh, exclusive stuff right yes he says knowing that there are but that dan will then explain them yeah i don't need to do that we, we explain it in the episode it's fine oh perfect perfect so there you go go <laughs> listen to the episode and you'll find out what you get on patreon good work no we do uh we do uh, bonus audio segments that uh where we talk about trivia and fun facts about the the book of the movie uh that the episode's based on we do a um Oh, uh, people at a certain level, at a uh, tier, excuse me, tier is the correct term. So, patrons of a certain tier can vote on the subject of the next episode. We'll, we'll pick a theme and then we'll choose three movies and then Patreon supporters can vote on which one they want us to talk about, which is why we're talking about Cutthroat Island. Because 53% the the- of our voters picked Cutthroat Island. Uh, the theme was box office bombs, so none of them were going to be great anyway. But who were the other selections? Who were the other possibilities? Hudson Hawk or the Postman? Oof. Yeah, all of all three Oof. of the movies lost lots and lots of money at the box office. So Oof. our selection I think you actually got off was, pretty lucky on that. <laughs> our selection. Uh, I've never seen Hudson Hawk, so I kind of wanted that one to win just so I could have a, an excuse to watch it. Wait, you had seen Cutthroat Island before? Yes. I've seen oh. Cutthroat Island before. And is this I, is this was, covered in the podcast? Because was, I have questions. No, we did not we did not actually discuss that. Whose fault was seeing Cutthroat Island the first time? Me. I was I wanted it was a it's a pirate movie and I was interested in pirates at the time and I was like, oh, aren't you aren't really any good pirate movies? And then I saw that that one was a I didn't know anything about it. So I was like, oh, let's watch this. And yeah, that's all it was. Viewers, our our good friend, old man Dan, does have an issue. And that what? issue is he doesn't want to be spoiled in any way, shape, or form. And so he avoids things yeah. like movie trailers. Yes. and Because they the modern movie day trailer is five minutes long and it ruins the whole movie i don't understand people himself. who do watch trailers just saying just saying this is a and then watch the movie app. You, do, you don't need to watch the movie because you just watched a spoilerific five minute mini look listen i it's we all have our choice we we've got our thing i i don't watch movie trailers anymore because i had two there were too many times where i had a movie ruined for me like, even if it's not a story spoiler, it might be a visual. Mm. It might be, you know, if I watch a movie, I want to experience it completely unsullied. I don't, I don't want to see anything about it. I want to be sitting in that movie theater and have a visual pop up on screen that makes me go, wow. Okay. Okay. And if That's I've seen it, if I've seen it on a little phone screen already then i'll be like oh it's that it's that image okay just bigger so so but this a... really comes down to uh to you our our faithful viewers um what are your opinions on uh seeing the trailer before the movie let yeah. us know down yeah. in the comments you, hashtag because, team uh, unsullied or a hashtag spoilers are a myth um to really uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> wow yeah a yeah. myth. So I really enjoy the journey of something. And there have been very few times when something that people consider a spoiler has actually ever spoiled something for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Anyway. I'm that's not it. talking yeah. about the... 
pivotal, you know, third act reveal spoiler showing up in a trailer. Although on occasion that has happened. happened. Yeah. But I'm talking about, you know, a character that you didn't know was going to be in a certain movie, like being in the trailer. Sure, but then you also have Marvel trailers where they purposely put things or change things in the trailer, and then that character is either not there or is dramatically different or... What's the point of that? That doesn't make any sense. Because they're keeping the mystery alive. And then you've got trailers that are shot completely like for, uh, uh, for the, the, uh, not the prisoner, um, the, you know, the Harrison Ford movie. Um, Fugitive? The Fugitive. Then you've got trailers like The Fugitive where they literally shot footage just for the trailer that has nothing to do with and wasn't in the movie at all. There That's is an art to trailer making. That correct. And for the most part, okay, uh, we, we need to stop this conversation okay. because okay. this is okay. going to be another 30 minute and you're gonna have to just delete it all anyway. Gotta so, delete it all anyway. And I've got, I've got a, you know, it's quarter, quarter past three. I got stuff to do, Curtis. I uh, know, so do I. And his, <laughs> na- and his name, his name is Thud, and uh, and he carries Thud. a grenade launcher. Yeah, Thud. I like it. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary pals, for joining us on this week's episode of Tabletop Tuesday. Join us next week. When we see if we can meet our commitments, find out what else we're hyped about, and see uh, what other tabletop things are happening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell. It does help us out a whole lot. And if you are into video games, don't forget to watch Dan playing his blind playthrough of Vampire on this very channel. Yeah. With new episodes, uh, new episodes of Vampire come out every Wednesday. Get it? Vampire on no, Wednesday. I'm not doing that. I'm ah, not, ah, no, ah, I said ah, I wasn't going to participate in that. I'm specifically not doing that because it's cliche AF. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I demand that you mute yourself during that last five seconds because that was just embarrassing. Do so better. watch Vampire. And, Do better. Uh, but also, it's not true. Episodes coming out only on Wednesday. That's not. That's not true. I've been releasing episodes almost every day. Just watch, Mondays, just watch Dan however, play. Just oh my god! We'll, be making <laughs> we'll see you here next week. Watch Dan play vampire, and dear God, I hope the plastic glue sticks. Nuggets. Nuggets.